morning everybody happy new year's eve we have made it through another year and i am going to see the year out by throwing myself into the woods um i was i've been struggling for the last few days on where i was going to go today just because i didn't know if i had to work tonight or not but last night i got the call from my night boss saying they're going to be done before i would be coming in so i've got the night off so I am going up to the Bear Creek Preserve, just part of the Natural Lands Trust. Uh, it's up near Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania. So I've got about an hour and a half drive ahead of me, but everything I've seen about this place looks like it's gonna be a beautiful day. Um, it doesn't look very beautiful right now, but the forecast says it's supposed to clear off. So we're gonna hold them to that and I'll demand a refund if it doesn't. <laughs> All right, so. I've got my lunch packed, I've got my snacks, it's about a six mile hike, so I figure I better take lunch with me. So let's get in the car and get on the road. So welcome to the Bear Creek Preserve. Uh, this, act, this place actually kind of surprised me because we drive past this area all the time going to the campground that my family normally goes camping at. But I've never been down this way. I have been over the dam once or twice before. Uh, Deb used to have a summer house near here that we'd come to in the winter for writer's weekend. But um, but I've never been down this road or seen this area. It's beautiful. I'm really looking forward to getting out here. So what I found out from the handy dandy brochure that they have here at the trailhead is that this area, 6,500 acres were bought by a wealthy family out of Philadelphia in the 1960s um, as a wilderness preserve for their family. And when they passed on, their sons decided that they wanted to find a way to preserve it in perpetuity. So they donated half the land to the North Branch Land Trust and the other half to the Natural Lands Trust, being the largest land acquisition the National Lands Trust has had. So um, there's a number of different trails here. We're gonna be doing mostly the purple loop, um, which is hopefully from the map, gonna take us to an overlook down onto Bear Creek, which is that creek we saw feeding into the dam. Um, there's a bridge out, so there's gonna be an interesting water crossing at some point. And I'm looking forward to see what this trail looks like. Um, it looks like it's typical Northeast Pennsylvania rock. So that might get a little cranky. Um, it has stopped misting. It looks like it's clearing up, but it is a little chilly. So I think I'm gonna put my hoodie on, uh, get my boots on and let's get on the trail.
to keep stopping to check my map because I know from some of the trip reports on all trails that Bear Creek is right over there and the bridge on the purple trail has been out for quite a while. It's a very cool suspension bridge. Um, I suspect one of the hurricanes this summer wiped it out. So there is no water crossing here. So I have to go up the red trail a little bit and there's a, an improvised trail there, bridge there, that is a log with some boards and ropes, which many people describe as sketchy, which doesn't fill me with confidence, but considering some of the things that I've crossed this year, I'll probably be fine. But So I turned off on the red trail and am looking for, hopefully, signs for this crossing. Let's go see if we can find this quote-unquote bridge. that wasn't so bad. Um, it was narrow, which is a little unnerving, but I got across it fine. So now I've got to go up this very steep embankment, but I'm getting sweaty, so I'm going to take this layer off now. I keep hearing voices, but I don't see anybody. So Instead, I keep talking to the bears and telling them they can't have my sandwich. I probably should rethink bringing Italian hoagies out on the trail, especially when I know there are bears around. And yet, I still bring them. All right, let's get the hat on uh, and get back on the trail. break at the two mile mark. This is not a hard trail except for those few spots where Pennsylvania insists on reminding you that you're in Pennsylvania. Um, but except for the climb out of the creek, it's been a pretty gradual climb 
Um, I think I'm going to gain 600 feet of elevation over a mile and a half. So that's not terrible. Um, I got a lot of it in that first quarter mile. So um, this beautiful area, I believe, is what's called a bald. They have them a lot down in the southern states where the hills are high enough to be mountains and not have a lot of trees on them, um, but not tall enough to be pointy and jagged in mountains. Um, but this is just beautiful, open, mossy trees with blueberry bushes everywhere. I bet this is fabulous in July, um, which is probably also why there's a lot of bears in the area. So I'm just taking a break to catch my breath. I'm doing good with my hydration. So hallelujah for that. I haven't been doing great on my hydration the last few weeks, just in general. So to be doing what I'm supposed to out on a trail is a big thumbs up. Um, my feet, I'm back in my original hiking boots, my Moabs, and two miles and I'm not having any problems. Well, a little bit of pinching on the side of my right foot, but not related to what I've been dealing with so far. So maybe it's just I got to stop futzing around with my boots and just go with what works and get used to carrying the extra weight. They say a pound on your feet is worth five on your back. Um, and these boots are a little over two pounds. So I've been trying to find ways to cut that weight down, but I think I need to just suck it up and save the weight other ways or just build up so I can carry the weight I have. All right. I'm just about done with my break. I need to find a private tree and then we'll get back on the trail. This trail for the last mile or so has been incredibly easy. Uh, it's some kind of two track, whether it was a logging road or a mining road or something like that. Uh, there's not supposed to be motorized vehicles out here, but I do see ATV tracks in some of the mud along this section. So either it's the maintainers coming out to check things out or somebody sneaking back here that's not supposed to. The forecast said it wasn't supposed to rain today, but I've been getting drizzle off and on, so I'm going to have to put in for that refund. Somewhere up ahead, maybe half a mile, three quarters of a mile, there's supposed to be an overlook down onto the creek. With the weather being the way it is, 
I'm not sure I'm going to see much of anything, but I'm going to take a break there anyway. So, big mud puddle. I'm going to put you away now. Not an overlook, but still incredibly interesting. I had seen this area from the road, and in fact, you can see the road in the background here. Uh, and to see how desolate and dead it looked, my first thought was, I wonder if this is remnants from building the dam. If the water backed up this far and basically killed this whole area and wiped out the trees and changed the terrain as it went past. My other question is, how high is the water supposed to be? Because it looks like this area would have been filled at one point, but if the trail is here, and it's a marked trail, it's not like it washes away periodically, how high are they filling the dam and are they not filling it as high as they originally intended? I know the Walters Dam does fill up. I mean, when we went past earlier, you saw how empty it was, but it does fill up to a point, at least enough where they open the gates twice a year and I don't know if that's just for recreational purposes, because I know a lot of kayakers in the area do come here when the dam opens uh, to ride the rapids, or if it's water maintenance and it just happens to also be recreational. All right, I haven't found any place to sit down and eat lunch, but I'm gonna keep going.
right, well, I finally found a place to sit down and have my lunch, loosen up my boot laces. Almost five miles and my foot is starting to feel it. So, so I do have limits, but that's okay. It's better than it was. Uh, last week, the four miles was killing me. So I definitely think switching back to my regular boots is the right decision. This is a beautiful spot. There's apparently a beaver dam and a beaver lodge just up ahead. <clears throat> so hopefully we'll see that as we go by. So New Year's Eve is a time to reflect. And while I'm out here on the trail, I thought I would take the time to reflect on my year of hiking. Yesterday was one year since I took my first hike. Now, obviously, it's not my first hike. I've hiked with my family as a child, and uh, I've done day hikes with my kids. But this, there's a difference between being a hiker and being a camper who occasionally takes long walks. And I think I've spent the past year becoming a hiker. In pagan, some pagan and Wiccan traditions, they have a pol policy, as much as those can have any kind of policy, uh, a tradition of if you are considering joining that faith practice, that you spend a year and a day learning, questioning, practicing, experiencing what that is like before you decide to commit to that path. Path here is an interesting choice of words. Uh, and so today is a year and a day. And so I need to think about what I have experienced and what I have learned. Obviously, I've learned a lot of skills. <laughs> I mean, there's no arguing with that. I've learned how to hang a hammock. I've learned how to sleep in a hammock. I've learned how to load a backpack. I've learned how to deal with injuries. I've learned how to, I don't know, what else have I learned? I've, I've learned that I need a chair. I'm not good at sitting on the ground. <laughs> I've learned that I'm not good at limits. I tend to push myself harder than I probably should or take more chances than is probably wise for me to take. And that's something I need to work on. I've learned that I don't actually like backpacking alone. I don't know if it's because I don't like being alone or because I don't like being alone with myself. That's probably something to deal with in therapy. But I do like going backpacking because of the things I get to see and experience while I'm out there. Some of this goes back to the previous point about not knowing my limits. I, I tell myself I've done my research, but I don't always listen to it. And those chances that I take make my backpacking trips harder than they ought to be for me to enjoy them. Part of that is that I keep going backpacking in Pennsylvania and it's just hard backpacking in Pennsylvania. But I don't want to stop. I have some plans for some gear changes for next year to make things a little easier on myself. Unfortunately, it's going to add a little bit of weight, but I've learned not just to listen to my body, but how to go about healing my body and trusting those who have the skills that I need. I was very hesitant about going to a chiropractor. 
And thank goodness for my friend Mirage, who is a doctor in Arizona. And I told her about the concerns I was having. And she looked at the chiropractor I was thinking about going to and instantly said, no, that is not the person for you. And she went out of her way and found the perfect person for me. And going to Dr. Cianci has made such a difference, not just in my physical well-being. He was able to do stuff for my shoulder that my physical therapy hadn't done. He was able to help with my back. Still having a little problem with that, but, um, but he also gave me the confidence I needed to pursue other health issues that I had just been accepting. Um, when you don't have a lot of money, when you are a single parent raising three kids, your health gets put last. And I've been in that mindset for a very long time. So learning that it's okay for me to take care of me has been a very important step in this journey. As is accepting, believing that I get to go out of the house without my children, without taking care of my children, and not, I don't have to feel guilty about that. For God's sakes, the youngest one is 20 years old. I don't have to be home for them. They are old enough to take care of themselves. And I can go out and experience my life and the things that I want to try. Whether I succeed at them or fail at them, it doesn't matter. I get to do them. And I don't have to sacrifice everything for them anymore. There was a time in my life where I did need to do that because they did need me. But they don't, or they shouldn't, need me in the same way anymore. And that's been a learning process for me in letting that go and letting them exist and learning how to exist myself. So this got very navel gaze. Gazy, and I'm sorry about that. And if you're not interested, that's okay too. I hope some of the people who are watching these videos are watching them because maybe they're middle aged women too and are hesitant about trying something like this. Or they are overweight and have the feeling they can't go out in the woods, that there's no place out there for them or they have health issues that mean they can't push 20 mile days. If I am able to help you see that there is a place for you in the woods, that you can be overweight, that you can be only able to walk a mile or two, that you can be a parent and need time. I hope I've been able to help you with that and, or at least be able to model that as you find your own way to your place. And I'd love to hear from you if you wanted to share your stories. Bob. All right, well, I've got a mile and a half left to go. I don't want to get up off this stump because my feet ache, but it's only a mile and a half. I know there's at least one big downhill and one big uphill because it's the same one that we did coming in, but I'm going to, I'm trying to, this whole area, I don't know if you can see it on the hill behind me, is just covered in wintergreen. And if you've watched my videos, you know how much I love wintergreen. So I'm really tempted to pick a bunch of this and take it home. But I think I'll probably leave it be today. All right, let me tie my boots up. Let's get back on the trail.
and as always, made it back to the car. Uh, did All Trail says I did 6.8, so almost seven miles. Uh, so as usual, I bit off more than I expected, but that's okay. Uh, the feet are okay. Uh, they hurt about as much as I would expect after doing that much distance, after having not done that much distance. And all the rocks and the roots and the inclines and descents. So this one was definitely a challenge. It was interesting. And I, there's another whole nother half of this that I'm curious to check out. And I want to do some research on that floodplain and see what was going on there. Cause that was fascinating. I can't say that this was a beautiful trail, but it was certainly interesting. So that's it for 2021. I heard on my way out that it took one last shot and took Betty White from us. So rest in power, Betty. Thank you for everything. I am going to get these boots off, get back in the car and head home to celebrate New Year's with my family, uh, who I do still love and do love spending time with, despite what I said earlier. I hope you get to have time with your family and I hope 2022 treats you well and sees you healthy. I will see you next year. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.